we're doing a quick interview for Uranium Blog. Mickey Fulp is the editor and founder of The Mercenary Geologist. Mickey, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the overview of the uranium industry. And I know in your presentation you often talk about the supply and demand, how many operating plants there are. Can you just give me a bit of a, a little insight into the industry? Okay, pre-Fukushima, we had 443 operating plants worldwide. Post-Fukushima, uh, with uh, plants coming offline in Japan uh, and some in Germany, we were at one point down to 425. Uh, since then, we have had at least four more come online, three new, and one come back online in Japan. So by my count right now, we have 429 operating uh, electricity producing nuclear reactors worldwide. Uh, in 2009, the demand was 185 million pounds. So do the math. We need to find and develop more uranium deposits. We saw each other recently in Chicago and we both actually agreed on something. We agreed on uranium and where this market is heading. So if you wouldn't mind uh, just giving me a bit of an overview on your position on uranium. Well, I've been uh, making the circuit lately, Tracy, uh, doing a talk called Why I Remain a Uranium Bull, and I think that says it all. Uh, at this time, the world is in deficit of mine supply versus use of uranium every year, and we project that's going to continue not only in the near term, but the mid term and the long term as more nuclear reactors are built and the world moves more and more toward electricity supply, base load electricity supply uh, from nuclear. Well, I realize that you are and have been a uranium bull for some time, but could you tell me, Mickey, when you think the rest of the planet is going to catch up with us? Well, it actually caught up with us. It caught up with us just about a year ago. If you look at the spot price and the long-term price right now, we are exactly where we are, were a year ago today. And the world was catching up. And I, at that time, I was making the circuit talking, uh, giving a talk called The Next Big Thing, Uranium. And then Fukushima happened. And that knocked the industry back considerably. But a lot of that was uh, perception. And in the interim, the demand for uranium has remain very strong and the industry is starting to make a comeback. There is an excellent point here about the uranium supply and demand. Can you talk to me a little bit about that, kind of give us an overview for us new uranium bugs? Okay, well we have three sources of uranium. We have mine supply, we have utility and government and speculator stockpiles, and then we have the Russians uh, megatons to megawatts program which basically takes nuclear weapons grade uranium which is 85 percent enriched and and it's sent uh, to the United States and Canada where it's downgraded to three to four percent and be able to be used in a nuclear reactor so if you look the mine supply every year is about 30 percent in deficit that has been made up for the last 10 to 20 years by utility stockpiles and government stockpiles. In addition, we have about 24 percent last year supplied by the Russians. That program will end in 2013. So if you do the math with government stockpiles, utility stockpiles dwindling, and Russians going to take 24 percent of world uranium supply off the market or at least off the market to the Western world in 2013 the uh, supply deficit is going to be more pronounced uh, in a couple of years and uh, simple supply demand fundamentals you don't mine enough then the price is going to go up. Mickey I, say you're a new uranium investor. Can you tell me where we might start to find terrific exploration investment opportunities? Okay, I'll preface my remarks, Tracy, by saying that I will not accept geopolitical risk with uranium explorers, developers, or producers. Uh, therefore, I tend to play only in North America and I tend to play only in established 
past producing and or currently producing uranium district. So in Canada, that would be the Athabasca Basin. Uh, I was a very early on supporter of Hathor Exploration, which is now being uh, taken out by one of two entities in a bidding war right now, that's Rio Tinto and Cameco. Another of my favorite companies in the Athabasca would be Fission Energy, which uh, uh, owns the adjoining property to Hathor, and it is my contention, whoever takes Hath Hathor and builds an open pit mine at Rough Rider is going to have to take out fission, and it's 15 to 20 million pounds of uranium because an open pit will encroach upon fission's ground. So that's uh, a place that I like to look would be the Athabasca Basin. Uh, the other place, of course, is in the good old U.S. of A. Uh, we were the world's premier uranium producer uh, before uh, the Three Mile Island accident in 1979. Um, so I tend to go into the old districts, and that would be uh, Wyoming, New Mexico, and South Texas. In South Texas, I am a supporter and a shareholder of Uranium Energy Corp., the United States' most recent new uranium producer uh, with ISR in situ recovery, well field uranium, very cheap, $13 a pound operating cost at this, at this time. Uh, in New Mexico and Wyoming, uh, my preferred company is Strathmore Minerals. It's the first company uh, I ever covered in the business, and I continue to be a long term supporter of Strathmore. They have two of the best undeveloped uranium deposits in North America, and that would be Roca Honda and the Grants Mineral Belt of New Mexico and the Gas Hills of Wyoming. Uh, another idea which I recently invested in is uh, UR Energy, which is probably within a year to year and a half of producing uranium from an in situ recovery operation also in Wyoming. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mickey. It's a pleasure to have you on Uranium Blog, and we hope to have you on our show regularly.